Hello, Internet. Welcome back to another edition of the Lumpy Guide to the Vulcanverse and Vulcan Forged in general. Today, we are going to continue our look into the collectible card game Berserk. Berserk is going into a second season coming up real soon and it's going to get a huge massive adoption real soon and I want to let you know right now how to play and specifically with this video we're going to take a look at the various cards that are in the free to play league and how they function and what type of cards exist so without further ado let's go take a look at some of those beautiful cards that Vulcan Forge has come up with. All right, the first ones we're going to look at are uh, cards that specifically say no special abilities. Now, I really shouldn't have to tell you exactly what these cards do. Uh, they do nothing except for attack and defend. That does not mean that they're bad cards in any way. Um, I use several of these cards. Well, not several. I use uh, Elios uh, quite a lot. He's quite a powerful card. It just means that they don't come with their own buffs, and that's okay. That's okay. <clears throat> okay, we're going to continue on with the Life Steal type of card. Uh, Zupa, the Impusa. Life Steal is a really interesting technique and mechanic. Um, basically, what happens is that whatever damage this character inflicts, it also receives that back in health. It's really quite interesting, and you can max out these cards and get them to be quite powerful. Next on the list is the Immortal card. This particular Immortal card is the current only Immortal card available in the set. And I happen to know that it has uh, been altered a little bit since this graphic was given out. Uh, it has one attack and six damage point, which is maybe even more uh, difficult of a card as the card prevents your hero from being attacked while it's in play whatsoever. So you could bring this card out, you could stack it full of health, you could maybe even add an immortal, or I'm sorry, a um, immune spell to this card, and uh, that, would, that would make it quite powerful. All right, the next grouping of cards we're talking about is the heal cards. Um, again, only one card in the free-to-play league, the High Priest. This card is extremely helpful for a certain type of decks. Um, when you bring it onto the playing field, it gives you a little green arrow and asks you which card you would like to heal to its maximum potential. Um, so you need to be careful about when you play it. You can't just play it without any other cards on board. Otherwise, you're just not making it to its full potential. Um, next is the Fortified Group. Fortified is a... Uh, actually, the Free-to-Play League is currently the only league that has a Fortified card, so that's kind of interesting. Fortified, uh, this particular card, the Dryad's Heart, uh, costs six lava to get on board. Um, that takes a little while into the game to get it on board, which means the Fortified uh, effect takes even longer to get going. Fortified increases the card's health by one per turn that it's on the board. So the longer you can keep this around, the harder it's going to be for the opponent to get rid of, especially if you can make this card a taunt or something like that, make them forced to attack your card. It's going to be really helpful for you. The Drunk and Confused set. Uh, the NFT free-to-play uh, league only has this confused card. The NFT league has a drunk card. And these confused cards basically mean that um, you're going to get a random attack by it after its intended attack. Now, this could be really helpful for you. Again, if you use it to your advantage, if you put this card into play and use it while you do not have a lot of other cards in play, it can randomly attack uh, several of your opinions, uh, opponent's cards. However, if you have a lot of cards in play, it might just attack your cards. So, um, you know, it's a little bit of a, of a dangerous card to play in a, in a little way. Um, I don't really like playing that card. Uh, all right. The draw card is another card that I don't use in my decks. That's not to say that you shouldn't use it and there might be a great strategy for it. I don't like using cards that reduce my hero's power and that's exactly what this card does. It gets you one more card into your active hand, but it takes a one hit point um, damage to your hero. That's just too much of a cost for me personally. Um, the curse card is actually really interesting and it's a card I don't use a lot, but it's a card I hate to see in combat also. 
Um, the uh, sorceress here, they they do a damage of <clears throat> not just the hit points that they cause, but they reduce the damage of the target that they're hitting. So um, if you're a, a card that has a four hit points and this card hits you, excuse me, a four attack points, and this card hits you, not only is it going to do the two damage, but it's going to weaken you as well so that your next attack is only half as powerful. Um, and it does round down. So if you had one attack power, you now have zero attack power. So yeah, that's that's terrible. All right, next on the list is the copy card. Copy seems like kind of a, a gimmick. Um, I would not say that that's a gimmick whatsoever. In Berserk, you are limited to 30 cards, and any card that you can use that brings another card or another minion into play is super valuable in my opinion. So the copy card, what it does is as soon as you place it on to the playing field, it brings a additional version uh, into your hand. Now the additional version uh, says that it cannot, it says no special abilities or something like that. So you cannot just keep copying them and copying them. Okay, we're going to take a look now at some of the blessing cards. Now they don't all say blessing. I like to say blessing slash spell. Um, they don't all say blessing. But what I mean by that are cards that uh, bestow an additional power upon other cards. Now these are a mix of cards that actually are some are minions that bestow this power once you put them into play, and some are just basically cards that bestow the power seemingly directly from your hero. They don't actually put a minion into play. So let's take a look at a couple of these, and you can see the difference. Um, the Shield of Ajax gives a friendly card a health buff of plus one, which is very helpful. We'll go into strategy, another reason why, but uh, you can put this card out, even if this card's not ready to attack on that particular turn, you can buff another card that needs to be um, just one hit point stronger so it can attack uh, on that particular turn and not get killed. So extremely valuable, extremely valuable card. Um, the Spartan, also the Blessing gives you a, a, a plus one attack bonus for any card you want, including itself, um, on that turn. So if you have a card that is just one attack point short of getting rid of yet another card of your opponent's um, plan, this card can help you just get right over the, the boost on that. Um, a couple of spell cards we're going to talk about. Um, the Invocation of Helios, it deals two random damage points to a single card. Now, you can control that if you remove all cards except for one on your opponent's playing field. Obviously, it's not going to be much of a random choice at that point. Or you could just take a gamble and play it early. Um, you could play this when another card uh, with a taunt card in play. Uh, this ignores all taunts. Um, now, the last card I want to talk about here is this Hardwood Club. The Hardwood Club has been changed also since this graphic. It now only deals one damage to an enemy card, which is plenty for a one lava card. And the Hardwood Club, as basic, basic of a card as it is, because you get no minion for it, I use it all the time. It ignores taunts. It does an amazing job of just getting rid of that one card that's lingering around and you don't have to spend a minion of your own to attack it. So it's a really, really useful card. Um, okay, let's talk about the rage cards. Um, I build whole decks around rage cards. Rage cards are amazingly powerful and whenever I see them uh, with an opponent playing them against me, it's one of the first things I have to eliminate. And why is that? Because they get more and more powerful with each round that they stay on the board. Each time they stay there, they get plus one attack. And that happens at the beginning of your turn, and it does not happen for the first turn. So the first time you put it out, the statistics are going to be exactly what the card shows. And next time, if it survives to your next turn, it's going to get one additional attack point at the beginning of your turn. It's going to make a great sound, a sound, and it, you know, makes you feel good. Uh, if you put a couple of these up at the same time and your opponent can't get rid of them, they can really do some damage. And if you can protect them on your side, then you're really going to do some damage. Okay, um, Libation of Blood. It's a sacrifice card. Um, this card, you know, it's it's a make or break card, and it's a, a Hail Mary long shot card. 
Again, I don't particularly like cards that take uh, health points off of my hero, and this one's a doozy at 10 health points. It does do um, a, a considerable amount of damage. It removes all cards, all cards, your cards, their cards, my cards, everyone's cards, uh, the cards and cross the entire board gone. So, you know, if you're going to use this, you better make sure that you've got plenty of health to make sure that you can take care of the damage and that your opponent is using a lot of cards for you to get rid of. Otherwise, it's just really not useful. Not, not useful in my opinion at all. Um, a silence card is a very particular skill set. This card will eliminate an enemy's special abilities. So it will eliminate the witches from being able to curse. It will eliminate the taunt cards from being able to um, taunt. It will eliminate the rage cards from getting their skill every time. So it's basically a, a canceller of cards. Just kind of interesting, canceller of cards. Speaking of canceller, we're going to talk about stuns. Stun cards are super, super helpful. I think they go uh, underrated. But basically, if you hit an opponent's card with a stun card, immediately that opponent's card is considered stunned. Any additional cards that you attack with that uh, against that card, they will not receive any of the damage that that card usually inflicts back because it is stunned. Um, that card remains stunned throughout your opponent's next turn as well, so they can't use it whatsoever. It's just kind of sitting there, which I think is just fantastic, especially with some opponent's better cards. Um, little known fact, if you stun your opponent's hero and your opponent's hero happens to have an ability power, they can't use it for that turn. Your, your, your opponent's hero is stunned just like any of the cards are stunned. They gotta wait one more turn. That's also super useful. Um, kind of the inverse of stun is uh, something called stone skin. Stone skin is when your attackers are stunned by attacking you. And they've used Medusa here as a great image of a stone skin. So if you put this card into play and you're able to get your opponent to attack this card for one reason or another, any card that they attack with will get stunned after the attack. And especially if you can buff this card with some health points or some extra damage and it can stick around for a while, it can be really useful, really useful. Um, two uh, more cards that we've got in the free-to-play league that I want to talk about here are summon cards. Again, cards that can bring other cards into play are extremely valuable and rare in this particular league. And I use both of these cards to a certain degree. Um, you've got the uh, Laughter of the Gods, which brings the Priest of Momos onto the board. Fantastic. And you've got the Spartoi Hoplite. I got that wrong. I know, Tanka. I know. I got it wrong, too. Anyway, um, this guy brings a uh, Spartlo uh, Petrast onto the board. Wow. I'm falling apart here. Absolutely falling apart. But they bring extra minions, not just into your hand, onto the board. So super, super helpful. Very different than a copy, which brings something into your hand. These guys bring cards onto the board. Um, I've mentioned the word taunt a couple of times. We're going to talk about taunt cards. Um, we've got a couple of taunt cards in the free-to-play league. And the big thing about taunt cards is once they're on the board, your opponent is forced to attack taunt cards first. So you can kind of direct the flow of your opponent's attack. And, you know, if your opponent's just sitting there with a couple of great cards waiting to attack, at the last point, you can throw up a couple of taunt cards and say, your turn, and their turn is not screwed, but they have to waste a bunch of time and energy getting rid of your taunt cards before they can follow through with your plan. It's kind of like... Um, you know, you're, you're putting things off for, for one more turn and maybe you got something up your sleeve and maybe you're trying to protect another card. Maybe you got a rage card up there that you don't want them getting rid of. So you throw a taunt card or even two taunt cards up there. So your rage card can stay one more turn and get an extra health or I'm sorry, an extra uh, attack point. Very useful, very useful. Okay, the last uh, category that we're going to talk about for the free-to-play league right now is the undead category. Um, undead is a v extremely, extremely helpful characteristic. They've got two of these cards, right? They've got the Spartoi Peltast, and they've got this Hypernor of the Spartoi. They all kind of work together in this 
um, undead theme. These guys, when you put them on the playing field, immediately that turn, you're able to use them. You're able to attack with them. There is no waiting one turn like you have to with all the other cards. So it's almost like they were put on the board last turn, but couldn't have been hit or affected. Um, so these guys are great last second uh, surprises. Bring them on the board, buff it with some other card, and then attack your hero for the uh, opposite hero for those last couple of hit points that they uh, didn't think that you'd have in you. Um, all right. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed learning about the different types of cards that Berserk has in the free to play league right now. And next video, we're going to go over some actual gameplay video of what to do inside the game and how to move your cards around and a couple little tricks and things that maybe are not tricks, but uh, people don't know about. So until then, thanks for watching. Uh, Hades smells funny. Press two to forage and, you know, get on to Berserk. Get on to Berserk because season two is going to be huge. All right. Thanks a lot.